The following program was paid for by the friends and partners of WLMB TV 40 Toledo. You're watching Main Street on WLMB with hosts Jamie Schmitz and Virginia Bosse. Welcome to another episode of Main Street, the fastest half hour on television. I'm Jamie Schmitz. And I'm Virginia Bosse. Well, what do I do if my kids don't listen to me? How do I build a peaceful, respectful, and godly home? Well, today on Main Street, we're going to be answering these questions and other real-life mysteries of one of the most challenging responsibilities you may ever face, parenting. That's exactly right. We have entitled this uh, episode, Getting Your Child of Mind Before You Lose Yours. And our special guest is our very good friend here at WLMB TV 40, Craig Miller. Uh, of course, people know him as the co-founder and therapist of Masterpiece Counseling Center in Tecumseh, Michigan. So we're going to be talking about this whole topic of parenting. Now, Virginia, I know that as you are a child, you are a very poorly behaved child. <laughs> and so we thought that you should share uh, one of those stories with our viewers. Today. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, just to clarify, no, I was a good kid. But, but just this one time. But just this one time, yes, you know, yeah. I had this bright idea when I was about 12 years old. Um, you know, well, we weren't allowed to have candy. This was kind of a, a new rule that uh, is brought into the family. So we weren't allowed to have candy. And so I was like to my stepsister, Erica, hey, let's go to the corner store and get some candy. Sterling's. Yes, Sterling's right, yep. store. And so then on the way home, though, I realized if we go through the front door, we are going to get caught. Caught by with, mama. Yes, with a yep. bag of candy in our hand. So instead, it's like, let's go cut through the backyards to get home. To go in the back door of the house. That's right. So don't get caught by mama. That's right. A little but, deception going here. I want to make sure I connect all these <laughs> points with everybody that's listening right now. But to, yeah. to get through those backyards, there were fences. And so about the fourth fence in, well, I'm straddling the fence. I'd thrown my umbrella over, and along comes this dog charging at me. And I'm like, run, Erica, you know, because I want to save her life, obviously. Yep, yep. So then the dog grabs my leg. Through your... Yeah, I was wearing jeans, jeans. Yes, right? grabs my leg, but praise the Lord, let go. And then I scampered across, the, you know, back where I came from, across the fences. And, uh, and you know, I, I did end up having to go to the doctor, and um, but, you know, I yeah. didn't get to enjoy the candy then. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did it. So, uh, you, you, so you still have a puncture wound, too. To this day, yes, that's my scar of remembering my disobedience. Well, Jamie, um, I know you were a perfect child, right? Yeah, I was, and uh, we're out of time, so no, I can't really. Oh, no. Okay, real quickly, uh, when I was a child, uh, we had this hay mow. We, we had a great big barn. I grew up on the farm, and uh, I was not supposed to go up in the hay mow and swing from the ropes that we had uh, over the hay mow and drop down. I used to have my older brothers and sisters, but I wasn't able to do that. I don't know what it is about age 12, but I had a <laughs> friend. I'm like, let's go up the hay mow and let's swing. I dropped through. The reason I wasn't supposed to is because there was this big hole in the corner, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a chance you could fall through. Well, I fell through. I broke my you collarbone. You found bone. the hole. Oh, yeah. no. So I didn't get in big trouble because I went up to the hospital and, oh, broke a bone, right? So then, uh, about eight weeks later, my collarbone had healed, and I decided to do the same thing with another friend. We didn't went up the hay mow. Didn't learn your lesson the first time. And yes, and I swung over the hay mow, and I let go, and I went through the same hole, and I broke the other collarbone. <laughs> so that time, I went to the hospital again, got the sling, and went through my eight weeks of healing. And then I was not allowed out of the house for the last four weeks of summer. So I got <laughs> punished, and that was my, my story of my being disobedient and making my mother and father lose their minds. But well, we're going to be talking about getting your child to mind before you lose yours with Craig Miller. It's coming up next. All right, well, I'm looking forward to it. But first, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our local weather and events. Now, back to Main Street. Well, welcome back to Main Street. Well, my special guest is my very good friend, Craig Miller. It's great to have you in good the house. Good to see you. Good to and, be uh, here. For those people that don't know that, Craig Miller is the co-founder and therapist uh, with the Masterpiece Counseling Center up there in beautiful Tecumseh, Michigan. And Craig, it is wonderful to have you here. Thank you. You know, we always love to bring you in when we have these really difficult topics. And our topic today is getting your child to mind before you lose yours. That's right. And uh, actually, that's a title you gave us and I love the double meaning of that <laughs> but uh, Craig uh, in all seriousness uh, uh, what do we mean what do you mean when you say you know getting your child to mind before you lose yours what do we mean what do you mean by getting your child to mind okay in my office we get a lot of people uh, parents bring their children in when they don't cooperate or they don't listen or the rebellious and when that happens parents don't always know what to do yeah now how common is it uh, do you see this in your office where you know parents are struggling with getting their children to behave to mind them 
It's very common. In fact, it's more common than people realize because it's it's as the parents are getting busier, the kids mm -hmm. are getting more confused and just because they want that attention. You know, when when children are very young, they need uh, parents to be more directive. It's a one-way conversation by guiding them and directing them in the way they should go. As they get older, then there should be more and more of a a two-way connection and conversation. So as they get older, as a teenager, it should be like a dialogue to helping and preparing them. And it's really as a learning curve for parents to learn how to do that. And that's very, in itself, needs a lot of learning. And, yeah. and, and kids get confused and they don't know what to do and then they, they don't mind after that. Yeah. Now, uh, from your experience in counseling, um, uh, what are some reasons that you found that kids don't listen to their parents? What are the, you know, what are the top few reasons why they don't listen to their parents. Okay, if I could just sum it up to help the parents understand it, it's really about a lack of a loving relationship. It's a lack of attention. See, all children want to be loved. They want that attention from the that parent in their life. And if they don't get that parent's attention and love, then there's this sense that they're not cared about or they don't, parent doesn't care. So think about it. So if I don't show my love, it's like I don't care. If the, they feel like the parent doesn't care, then they don't care. And what they do is they will seek out attention by doing a lot of things to get the attention because we tend to give more attention when they're bad than when they're good. Now, let me ask you this. I want to play devil's advocate yeah. for just a second, but I could hear parents out there saying, well, you know, my children aren't showing me love, you know, so it's all on them. I mean, how mm. would you answer that? Well, it's interesting because we'll go back to issue of who is supposed to give who to what, okay? Who to who here. Now, it's really from, it's always from the top down, not the bottom up. Yeah, and, we, and that's that's an order established by God, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're older, they won't depart from it. Now, who should be doing the training? It's the adults should be giving the training down. You know, the saddest thing is, uh, us as parents, we just rely on what we learned, and that's usually not very good. Mm. So it's a matter of learning more, and that's really where the church comes in to bring more training in terms of godly biblical training and to allow children and parents to learn what to do for their children. Mm. And it all comes down to also respect. And so because we need to allow ourselves to, to respect the child because Respect starts from the top down, not the bottom up. Because a lot of parents, you're right, if the kids aren't rebelling, then they have a problem. But as a parent, I need to be the one that's actually creating the environment of respect and how and how am I supposed to behave within that environment. Otherwise, kids are just going to do whatever they want. Very good. Kind of along the same lines, uh, let me counterpoint a little bit. Uh, why do you believe that this lack of love that the children feel, uh, lack of love, lack of attention, has a large effect on children. Why is that so consuming for so many children and in the parenting relationship? Okay, well that's a good, very good point. When we're born, um, we really more just have temperament, uh, where it's a strong-willed or uh, a, either a strong-willed or a, a child that's uh, that's reliant and uh, capable to help by. There's there's really not a whole lot there in terms of our being able to know what to do as a child. It's up to the parent to create an environment that's loving because children rely on the love and the attention they get. So every child wants that attention so that the amount and type of love I receive determines my measurement of worth and value. Now say that again because that's, that's, that's more than a mouthful. It is, okay, it's very important. So the, the amount and type of love that I give my child de determines the measurement of love and value and worth they feel within themselves. So if I give you attention, you feel important. If I show interest in you, you feel interested. That's where that worth comes from. It's interesting. I see a majority of the people I see in my office don't have a sense of worth or confidence in themselves. It's because when I say, out of boy, good job, I get a, it creates a sense of confidence. If I either don't say it at all, or I'm always negative, or there was a, a negative spirit in the home, or a lot of criticism, then I must have done something wrong, and then I'm not gonna believe in myself to be able to do anything, so I don't really care. Because if, if it looks like you don't care as a parent, the child literally feels that, like you don't care. And if the child feels they don't care, then there's a lack of worth. You, you know, if I give worth to something, parents are constantly saying that, uh, why don't you care about this? Well. 
I had to establish a amount of worth in myself to be able to see worth in something else. Mm -hmm. That worth is created from the top down in terms of what the parents give the child, not the other way around. Very you, good, very good. L let me pivot just a little bit. Yeah, um, let's do that. Uh, how, how do you create a respectful home so your children will mind you? Okay, a good question. Re respect has to start from the top down, not the bottom up. And I mentioned that before. And we need to recognize that the parent needs to be able to say, good job. They need to set the standard. The this is a biblical principle. They need to set the standard of what the child should be doing and how. For example, uh, how I treat you, um, uh, how much you love them, what you say to them, uh, in terms of the, the type of words you use, uh, how you say those words has a lot to do with respect. Uh, if, if somebody, if a child comes in and somebody disrespects them by cursing at them or pushes them down, you need to then teach the child, what, what do they do with that? If the child sees the mother and father respecting each other, then that's their role model to know what to do in the respect. And then the, that is then, then brought down to the child and the child will learn how to respect each other and within the home and outside the home. Very good. Uh, what can parents do though with a child? Uh, let's, let's, let's go a little bit more than just a child. Let's talk about teenagers for a second because uh, I hear a lot of things are, you know, that's a real departure for a lot of mm -hmm. that age. Uh, what can parents do if a teenager just will not listen to them? A good question. Let's just say that uh, we ha we're doing all these biblical principles and we're talking to the children and we're connecting with them. So I get other parents that come in and say, look, I I'm trying to love my child, but they just won't listen and they won't cooperate. So I say to them, let's look outside the box. Let's go larger than that. Let's look at the diet. Uh, did you know the amount of sugar we consume and even carbohydrates has a lot to do with how my mind works and how much energy I have? So I say, are you drinking a lot of pop? Are you eating a lot of bread or uh, the, the bread that uh, doesn't have the nutritional value? Is there a lot of sweets in the diet? Because that'll increase the energy and also increase my, the amount of energy that's going so much I don't take the time to think. If I don't think, then oftentimes I'm just reaction all the time. When I'm reacting, then my mind is going crazy. Uh, another one is uh, just medical issues in general. Like for example, I see a lot of ADD or attention deficit disorder children and we look at what's going on and that can be a medical issue that needs to be tested to see what's going on because my mind works so fast that I don't take the time to think and I'm always all over the place and I don't mind. That's another one. A, a third one would be the environment. It depends on what's going on in the home. Is the uh, is, there, is there yelling in the home? Is the, the mother and father respectful to each other? Is there a lot of chaos in the home? Uh, there are actually statistics show, or um, new research that shows that, that ADD symptoms, which is not concentrating, not thinking, fast thinking, um, hyperactivity, has a lot to do with even PTSD issues, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. So if there's a lot of chaos in the home, a lot of fighting and a lot of yelling going on, what happens is that hyperactivity, because they don't know what's going to happen, that increases the, what it looks like it's ADD. So you've got to look at what's going on in the environment, in their school, in their home, with their friends, and you need to always reevaluate that before to see, because that's how the child is influenced, even teenagers. Very good. Um, now, I've heard you write about and talk about in the past about uh, something you call imprinting. Uh, what do you mean by this? Tell, tell us how that relates to parenting. All right, so, uh, when a child is, is raised in the home, whatever goes on in the home, say in terms of what the parents do, is really their role model. Uh, we, are a, we have a big responsibility as a parent to role model exactly uh, what we expect the parent to do. So if we want uh, the parent, to, if we want the child to be uh, respectful, then I need to be respectful. If I'm swearing and our kids start swearing, then we need to realize they gotta get that from someplace. If our kid yells, then they get that from someplace. If they have a lot of anxiety, they get that from someplace. So that's an imprint that happens, and if that doesn't change, then they take that into the rest of their life, and then it just gets worse. It all comes from somewhere, doesn't right, it? Right, it does. Very good. Uh, what are some uh, preventative things a parent can do to keep from losing his or her mind? All right, that's an excellent question. All right, here's a telltale sign. Uh, to know if the parent's losing their mind, all right? If, if the parent, uh, their 
response is the same or greater than the child, then the child is actually losing their mind similar because they're regressing at a level where the child is, which then makes the child then react the way they do. So like if one's yelling and then one, the parent's yelling even louder? Right. Uh, that's that Or even yelling. Okay, you think about it. Uh, let's just say most parents are at least 20 years older, right? Right. So, all right, so we have a child that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. All right, I don't care. Maybe it's even 14 years old and the parent's 20 years older. Why are they acting like the child? They should be more wise in terms yeah. of they need to like set the standard in terms of what the environment should look like. Why should the parent be yelling? It's because they're getting out of control and they're regressing emotionally. If the amount of emotion is greater than the situation calls for, then that situation is not the origin of that amount of emotion. So what is a practical solution for that? Well, first of all, they need to get help for that because they're actually part of the problem of why the kid's that way because they're creating the environment of hysteria or being chaos. out of control, chaos, and the child's responding to that, and that's like kind. And that's why people come and visit you. That's, yes. Or well, one of the many reasons. Yes, well, that's one of the many reasons, and then we help point that out. And, you know, I need to help parents realize that most people and, and, and parents believe if my kids are rebellious that I feel like I'm a failure as a parent. You're not a, they're not a failure. They're just learning. It's all a learning curve, and we have to learn how to get through that. Very good. Uh, what, what do you say to parents who are busy all the time and just taking their kids from one activity, one right after the other, after the other? I see this all the time out there. Yeah, and it's busy. Well, as a parent, I want my kids to be active. I want them to be in sports, and I want to be with them, and hopefully we're right there with them rooting. But, you know, Jamie, if we don't have enough time to have loving communication and just time together as a family, sitting and talking about what's going on, the best place is the dinner table. I tell uh, you must get a time around a dinner table. James Dobson did research, and he said that in the research he's found, the more dinners you have by having communication at the dinner table, the less discipline you have. I tell, uh, especially families, I don't care how old the children are, go around the family, uh, around the table, and, and play the high-low game. High-low, that means everybody give the high of the day and the low of the day. And the parent will show an interest. Hey, well, tell me all about that. Oh, wow, that must have been really sad. The more the kids see that you're interested in what they doing they're going to bring more things to the table and tell you more things that are going on in their life and that shows the interest and they want and you're going to have less discipline because of that that's fantastic that's a great recommendation the high low game i love that i love that um now what if your children are older and mm -hmm. you haven't been doing uh these things is it too late for you to have a parenting relationship with you know older children is it, is it too late that's a very good question Jamie, it is never too late to have a relationship with your children. I get, uh, I get even grandparents uh, or older uh, parents that are in my office that have kids in their 20s and 30s, and they're not living at home, and they haven't been for a while, and they're very saddened because they don't have as good of a relationship. And I say it is never too late because, number one, we're always a parent. And number two, they're always our children. But what do we need to do about it? Um, we need to train up a child the way they shall go. Now, just because they're not with that now and I couldn't train them up the way I want and I regret, when are you going to start? The start is now. You, we still call them. You call them or write a note. And what if they say, well, they, they don't want to have lunch with me or you just, you're the pursuer. See, the parent's job with a child is to always pursue them. They'll always be the one after you, after, to be, you need to be like God for them in terms of your saying, uh, you're pursuing them. It's like pursuing grace. It's like prevenient grace. It's a God that's always pursuing you and wooing you towards them and wanting that loving relationship. And parents need to do that. Very good. Uh, what should the church's role be in the family? Well, the churches should be the one to have uh, the either ro uh, definitely role modeling. Uh, hopefully, they have some kind of programming. And I tell parents, even if you're going to a particular church and you like that church, stay there. But if you find in another church that there's programming or something on parenting skills or dealing with teenagers, go to that program temporarily. And you can go to two churches at one time. Just find places where churches have uh, role modeling. There's all mentoring groups uh, where they can actually mentoring uh, older couples, mentoring younger couples, uh, also children's programs. 
You can have in terms of teachers showing the respect uh, that's going on in the classroom and hopefully that will then uh, go, uh, they'll see that in the church and they'll see that hopefully within the home at the same time. Yeah. Church is very important. Uh, let is. me ask you this. Um, you said you wanted to give a charge to single parents and I mm -hmm. want to give you a minute to do that. Well, I want to do one thing right now. There are parents out there that are struggling and especially single parents that are struggling. And I want you to know that God loves you and God sees what you're doing and God sees that you are trying and you're doing everything you possibly can. And I, and I know that God loves you and that when, because you're struggling, you're not a failure. And I want you to be able to go and seek that help from somebody because God wants you to receive the help from other godly people and also seek the Lord. Spend that quiet time the best you can and seek the Lord and give uh, your heart to the Lord and allow the Lord to give back to you and what He wants to give you. But seek that help for you because God loves you and wants you to know that. Very good. Craig, thank you so much for being with us. We're out of time once again, my friend. Will you come back and visit I us again? I would love to do that. That's yes, great. Yes, that would be great. Good. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Well, uh, when we come back, Virginia will be sharing some closing comments, and we'll be telling you about next week's episode of Main Street. Now, back to Main Street. A lot of wisdom coming from Craig Miller of Masterpiece Theater. That was a great episode, Masterpiece Jamie. Masterpiece Counseling. Yes, Masterpiece Counseling. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I just, I loved how he said, you know, parents create the environment. And then he was talking about the emotions becoming greater than the situation. That's right. And, you know, I know that now I'm a mother of four. And, and when my kids were all little, and, that, you know, there would be times where I would catch myself yelling. And then the Lord had... Um, Laid in my heart this verse from Proverbs 15, 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And so that just totally changed my thinking and, and just helped me to um, speak m more kindly, gentler to my children. And, uh, and so just a lot of words of wisdom from, coming from Craig there too. That, that is a, that's a good word. You know, um, as I think about, uh, you know, parenting children, uh, we, we have four children as well, Rachel and I do. And uh, one of the things we always do is, <coughs> excuse me, is we always, every night, uh, you know, we always try to eat our meals together, just like uh, Craig was talking about. But we always have family devotions and, uh, and we always have family reading time. Now the family reading time can be, you know, just we're going through this book or that book and it's usually, you know, uh, you know a story book of some type. Uh, but we always read the Bible each and every night. And, uh, and it made me remember, Paul is writing to Timothy uh, when he's giving his charge and he says, and uh, and remember from how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. It's just the Lord is saying, you know, we need to realize that scriptures can make us wise unto salvation. And that's one of the things that we really need to impart uh, into our children. That's and right. uh, I, it's really, uh, as I've seen each of our four daughters make a commitment to Christ, I think that the fact that we've been imparting scripture to them each and every night uh, during family reading time, family devotions has been very important. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, Jamie. And well, we are so glad that you joined us today. And we want to encourage you to join us next week on Main Street for another great episode. We hope that Main Street has been a blessing to you today. Please feel free to contact the following to learn more about the topics discussed on today's show. To send your feedback about Main Street or to contact WLMB, you may call, email, or write to us. You can also visit our website at WLMB.com slash Main Street for more information. WLMB would like to thank all the faithful supporters of WLMB that make this program possible. Main Street is a production of WLMB-TV40 in Toledo. All rights reserved.